Hello, hello, hello. Happy Monday. It's Nakia here. We're going to go ahead and um, get started with Money Mondays here soon. We got about four minutes. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about our budgeting methods. Y'all know I love budgeting. Um, it's near and dear to my heart and I can talk about it forever. And so tonight we're going to be talking about budgeting methods. I'm going to be telling you the two different levels to budgeting. Um, I'm going to tell you a lot of different content. I'm going to give you some different budgeting uh, methods that you can use, some budgeting types. And so, yeah, we're going to have a good time. So come on in. Um, I'm going to give people an opportunity to log on. Usually a lot of people watch the replay, but I just want to have people come on um, so that I don't miss anybody. So, yeah, it is already January 23rd. I can't believe it. It's literally zipping past. Um, but I'm, ex I'm still excited about the new year. If you all saw, I posted my vision board. Um, so that's finished. I'm still going through my money reset checklist, making sure I have everything in good order. Um, I've ordered my cards. I've replaced my cards. I've checked my beneficiaries. Um, I've done my vision board. I got my $5 container. So yeah, I'm off to a good start. I hope you all are off to a good start as well. So let's do a time check. I started a little earlier um yeah so we'll wait for a couple more people to get on and then we'll start promptly at 9 um p.m central standard time let's see i'm making sure i can see my comments and everything i think i can on both streams so we'll we'll see but yeah um what's been new this week oh that's that's my air freshener <laughs> i hope you guys can't hear it um it goes off every 15 minutes but anyway anyway um yeah that's all i've just been really focusing on goals this year um my big goal is i want to make a million dollars this is going to be my first million dollar year so i'm super excited about that i'm forecasting i'm brainstorming i'm figuring out what it is that i need to do to get to that next level so hopefully you all are doing that as well and making some good use of this new year, um, this fertile ground. You can either start your new year in January or in spring. Some people say start in spring so that you follow the cadence of the, of the seasons, but I guess it would depend on where you live. So if you're on the western side of the planet, um, of the world, it may still be winter for you, but if you're in a different country on the Eastern side, maybe you're in Europe or Africa or Australia, then it's definitely your summer. So this will be a good time for you to start as well. But it is getting to be that time. So I have my notes here per usual. Um, uh, we're going to start right at nine o'clock. Let me be fair. Cause we have a few minutes, a minute to go and then we'll get started. okay let's get started it's 9 p.m on my clock so we're going to go ahead and get started so as i said tonight we're going to be talking about budgeting methods um let's talk about the why first so your budget is such a sacred thing um it's really a tool to help you get to where you want to be right um i can't tell you the number of times i've heard of people not having a budget and it just blows my mind um, so when you think about your budget, think about it in this um, aspect. Would you build a house without a blueprint? The answer is no. You will never find, find a house builder that will build a house without a blueprint. And your budget is your blueprint. It's the blueprint to your money. So you really want to make sure that you are updating it, that you're using it, that you're active with it, that you're engaged in the process, that you and your family, right? So you and your spouse or you and your other half or whoever or sticking to a budget, you guys are on the same page because that's really gonna make or break um, the success that you have with your budget. Now, I'm, give you, I'm gonna give you a hard truth. The hard truth that I want you to understand for tonight is budgeting is not hard, okay? I don't care if you're not good with money. I don't care if you went to Harvard or you didn't. I don't care if you make $100,000 a year or $10,000 a year. I don't care what your circumstance is. Budgeting is not hard, okay? But it takes two things, and this is the hardest part of budgeting. It takes consistency and it takes mindset. 
So a lot of people, they'll make a budget, but what good is a budget if you don't use it, right? So you have to consistently use it. You have to be consistent with your process. You have to be consistent with your plan. Um, you have to be consistent with your goals. And that's where a lot of people fall short. And then mindset, um, this, I'm not talking about people who aren't making a living wage. I'm talking about people who are making a living wage and they are just not able to manage their money. And it's usually due to their mindset. It has nothing to do with their money. If you've been following me for a while, you've probably heard me say or heard me uh, writing one of my emails to my list or whatever that you probably make enough money, you probably just don't budget. And so that tends to be the number one reason where people are not managing their money and they're not where they really wanna be is because they're not managing their money. So the hard part is consistency and mindset. Once you get past the budget, once you find what works for you, everything else is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, there are levels to budgeting, okay? So the first level is you have to know yourself and you have to understand certain things about yourself. You have to know your family. You have to know your situation. Let me break that down. I am not good with cash, right? Like with cash. Give me a second. We're reconnecting. So hold tight. Okay. I'm not good with cash. So I don't carry a lot of cash. If you give me $100 and I leave, that money is gone, right? But I'm definitely afraid of overdrafting my account. So you really have to know yourself and know your how you are with money to really be able to dive in. Now, let's talk about the methods. There are two main methods to budgeting. Um, you have written and you have electronic. Now, when I say written, I'm talking about either with a, a legit like paper and pen, right? I'm talking about um, maybe you, you're using a calendar, maybe you're using an envelope system, but it's written down physically on a piece of paper somewhere. That personally is not my favorite, like budget planners, that those are not my favorite. So I don't typically use those. I use um, electronic means. So when I say electronic, I mean a ghost budget where it's in, ghost budget is something that I developed where it's in Excel or it's in Google Sheets, or I'm talking about an app that you're using where you don't have anything written down. Everything is in your phone. Everything is in your computer on your iPad, somewhere for you to update it electronically, somewhere for you to have it electronically, okay? So when you're, when you're figuring out how you want to budget and finding a way that works well for you, the first thing that you have to do is figure out if you want a paper or electronic method, if you want to use which method you want to use, because that's going to impact how you, how successful you are. Now, just because I don't like a paper budget doesn't mean it doesn't work, right? It definitely works. But what you have to figure out is if it's going to work for you. It's, it, everything doesn't work for everybody. So you really have to dive deep and figure out what's going to work for you, what's going to work for your lifestyle, what's going to work for your family, especially if you're married or you have a spouse, and what's going to help you be successful, right? Because if you choose one of these methods and it's not really working for you, that's going to greatly decrease your um, success rate. So you have to figure out which method that you want to use. Okay, the next thing that you have to figure out is the type of budget that you want to have, okay? So there are probably hundreds of budgeting types. I don't know, um, a lot. But I'm going to share some of them with you right now, okay? So the first budgeting type is your traditional budget. This is where you take your income, you subtract your expenses, and then you spend the rest. Very common, super easy to use, super easy to implement, but it's just a traditional budget. Then you have a 50, 30, 20 budget where you spend 50% of your income on necessities. So things that you need, um, you spend 30% on discretionary. So your wants, and then the other 20% goes to your savings or your debt. Pretty easy, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, all of these, let me go back. All of these types have pros and cons. Like I said, you have to just figure out what works for you. Now back to the 50, 30, 20. There are several variations of the 50, 30, 20. You have 60, 30, 10. You have 50, 40, 10. You got 30, 30, 30, 10, 60, 40, 80, 20. All of those are variations where you're putting a percentage on what you spend. So you're, you're, you're saving 40% um, of your income and 60% goes to bills. You're spending 10% of your income and the rest goes to this and the rest goes to that. So look into those more to figure out um, which one of those will work best for you, but the most common is the 50, 30, 20. And then you have a zero-based budget. 
Um, a zero-based budget just means that you allocate every dollar. So every dollar has a home. You have your list of expenses. You have your list, your uh, list of your income, what's coming in every month or bi-weekly, and you figure out where each dollar goes. Even if you put the extra dollars into a um, savings account, even if you allocate the extra dollars to debt repayments, whatever it is, every dollar needs to have a home. Every dollar needs to be accounted for. Um, after I go through the list, I'll tell you all my favorites and what I actively use. Next, you have goal-based budgeting, where you say, okay, um, I'm going to spend 25% of my income, um, and that's going to go to my savings, or 50% of my income is going to go to, to my retirement, or 20%, I'm going to invest 20% of my income. That's just goal-based. And so after you um, invest that 20%, after you save that 50%, whatever it is, whatever the percentage is, then the rest goes to your bills, it goes to um, paying down your debt and all that kind of stuff. The, the, one, two, three, four. the fifth way is the envelope system. Now, the envelope system can be a type and it can be a method. The reason why it's a method is because it, um, it entails you putting your money into envelopes into, and then into categories, right? So let's say you have $2,000. You will have an envelope for rent. Okay, $1,000 goes to rent. You'll have an envelope for groceries. $250 goes to groceries. Car note insurance is $400. That's in a separate envelope. And then when that money is spent, that's it. So if you have a $250 grocery budget and you go over on your grocery budget, uh, you're going to be hungry or you're going to have to figure it out, right? So that's how you do um, the envelope-based budgeting. It can be a method and it can be a type. The reason why it can be a method is because that's a written form of uh, budgeting. And it also can be a type because you can choose to use that as a means to stay on track and pay your bills, right? But you still have to sit down and figure out what goes into those en envelopes and making sure that you have enough to cover all of your expenses for that month. The next type of budget is um, the reverse budget. And it's where you um, pay your goals. So you pay towards your goals, then you focus on your needs, and then you spend the rest. Um, and so very straightforward, very easy to understand. You have pay yourself first, which a lot of our grandparents have been telling us since we were kids, whenever you get that paycheck, Sonny, make sure you're saving at least 10%. That's pay yourself first. Okay. I don't know why I use that voice, but that's, um, pay yourself first. And then lastly, you have a, a spending ceiling where you don't spend over X amount. So if your amount for that month is, $3,000, you don't spend over $3,000. Once your $3,000 is spent, that's it, okay? All of those are very straightforward. Um, there's no right or wrong reason. Um, it just depends on you, right? It depends on what's going to work for you and what's going to help you be successful. What works for me may not work for you, just based on your upbringing and your personality type and your home life and your situation and how you're handling your money. So you really have to figure out what works for you out of those methods and out of those types, okay? Now, let's talk about some budget killers because there are some things that you can do that will absolutely wreck your budget. It's like when you go to a buffet when you're um, on a diet and it wrecks your diet, same concept. So the first thing that's going to kill your budget is not being consistent. You cannot budget one month and then skip three months and then come back and budget some more. It does not work like that. It's going to be too confusing. You're going to be off track. So you really have to commit to some cadence, some, some type of consistency that's going to help you stay on track. Um, the next budget killer is you're misaligned with your family, right? So if you're married, and your husband doesn't feel like or your wife doesn't feel like they're getting enough um, spending money or they are frivolous with their spending or you guys are just not seeing eye to eye when it comes to money, that's going to kill your budget. Because if you're dealing with somebody that doesn't think that you need a budget and you feel like you do, they're not going to stick to it. So you have to be aligned within your household in order to be successful. Impulse buys, grocery stores, going without a list, uh, online shopping when you're bored, just buying stuff impulse buys will kill your budget um those small holes sink big ships so you really have to be mindful of those impulse impulse purchases that you make 30 here 40 there 50 here 100 it all adds up and by the time you look you look up you're 500 off your budget and all it took was a few short clicks 
Um, the next thing that will kill your budget is not being happy with your budget, right? So if you feel like you're just paying bills and that's it and you're not really having fun, that's going to kill your budget. That's going to take the fun out of it. It's going to make you feel like you're 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 being punished right like something is being withheld from you so you got to make sure that you build that fun into your budget so that you can stay on track subscriptions um i saw a post online the other day and it said we cut cable but now we have 15 subscriptions and that's so true you really have to watch those subscriptions things that you're not using things that you're not watching if you're not going to the gym cancel those subscriptions you're not even using them cancel those subscriptions because those are more than likely killing your budget and then you have a uh, grocery shopping without a list um i absolutely i won't say never but i very rarely go to um hey Pashina. um i very rarely go grocery shopping without a list and even when i do go with a list i always put like four or five miscellaneous items on there because i know it's going to be something that i see that i want that I can always buy. So make sure you're making your list when you do any type of shopping, whether it's grocery shopping, whether you're going to Target, whether it's Walmart, if it's back to school, you need a list. And then the way you can build some flexibility into that list is adding a few miscellaneous items. Um, you could keep, say, let's say it under $20. It's a good way if you have kids too, to allow them to get something that they want from the grocery store. Every kid can get something under $8 and that that's really gonna um, help your budget. Food delivery. Y'all better stop ordering that Uber Eats. Um, Y'all better stop ordering Uber Eats. They, first of all, they're charging you more money for the food. They're charging you a delivery fee a lot of times. The drivers won't even bring your food if you don't tip. And by the time you looked up, look up, you could have had two or three meals based on food delivery. And I'm going to add in um, car services. Uber and Lyft, those are killing your budget. Like, it's killing your budget. So be mindful of those things when you're um when you're thinking about your spending and what you're doing day to day. Um it takes $27 a day to lose $10,000. $27 a day is not a lot a lot of money. You can blow that if you eat breakfast and lunch at work. Um and if you get a coffee, gone. So $27 a day is how much it's going to take for you to lose $10,000 a year. Um yeah, so be very mindful of that spending of those small holes. Um, something else that's going to kill your budget is short-term thinking. So if you if you know that you want to be a homeowner in the next five years, why are you not acting like it? If you know that you want to go on vacation this year, why are you not acting like it? Don't let your short-sightedness keep you from living the life that you really want and keep you from being successful with your budgeting. And then we have no accountability. Um, you can lie to me all day and all night. You can lie to whoever else all day and all night. But if you lie to yourself, you in trouble. You have to be accountable to your money. You have to be realistic with yourself. You have to be honest and you have to take responsibility or you're going to fail every single time. And that's not just with your budget. That's with everything. And then lastly, procrastination. So waiting to budget let's say you get paid on friday but you're waiting until saturday to start um, looking at your budget or even thinking about it you're waiting to monday to start looking at it or even thinking about it that's going to cost you that's going to be a, a budget killer so be mindful and be uh, leery of those budget killers because it really can set you back now i'm going to give you some tips on what you can do to increase your success uh rates so the number one thing that you can do is build on consistency. So if you get if you get paid bi-weekly, you want to be looking at your budget the week you get paid, right? And figuring out what needs to go what needs to go out, what's coming in, what you're looking like. You need to take an inventory of your bank account, figure out why you have extra money in your bank account if it's extra. Excuse me, it's not just to spend all willy-nilly. You need to figure out why it's in there and then be consistent with using your budget and implementing your budget because those are two things that are going to help you be successful. You need to find what works for you. There is no wrong way to budget your money, okay? What works for me may not work for you. What works for you may not work for me. We're two different people, so you have to find what works for you. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Um cliche i know but you have to have a plan of what you're gonna do with your money because if you don't you're gonna fail um 
a dream without a plan is just a wish. I'm just, I'm not pulling these out. I wrote this down. You have to put your plan together, right? Because if you say, oh, I want to um, go on vacation next year, but you don't start planning. If you say, oh, I want to go back to school. I want to get another certification. I want to get a degree, but you're not planning. If you say, oh, I want to buy a house or I want my kids to blah, 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 but you're not planning, you're going to, you're going to fail. Um, life money. Life money is what I call it. It's also called an allotment, discretionary spending, pocket change, whatever it is. You need to make sure that you're building um, life money into your budget. With your life money, you can do whatever you want. So if you want to go to the thrift store and spend $100 of your life money, that's your business. If you want to buy tickets to the game or go to a concert or shop or pick up some tools for your hobby, buy some new skates, whatever it is, that's what you do. But build that life money into your budget and put a cap on it. So it just can't be like an unlimited amount of money because then you're going to overspend. So make it like $300, $400, $500 a pay period, even $100, $150, whatever is in your budget for you to do, add that in there. And then, like I said earlier, build the fun in. So if you are just paying bills and that's it and you're not having a good time, you're not really living, you're not seeing your friends, you're not going out, you're not doing the things that you like to do, you are not going to stick to it. So building fun into your budget is going to help you really be able to focus on um, the success rate. Um, it's going to help you with longevity and it's going to help you stay focused on the long term. Okay, so that's what I had. Let me know in the comments um, what you're going to choose as your type and as your method. I'm interested to know. Oh, I was going to tell you guys my favorite, what I do. So me personally, I use my ghost budget. And my ghost budget is something that I teach in my course. And I call it a ghost budget because one minute it's not there and the next minute it is. So I use an electronic um, Google Sheet. That's what me and my husband use. We're on the same page. We have it on our phones. He can look at it. I can look at it. We know where we stand, what's coming in, what's going out. Um, and then for us, the types that we focus on is zero based. Um, we put our, we make sure every dollar is accounted for. We allocate every single dollar. So we zero to uh, budget to zero is what they call it. We also do goal based budgeting. So we build our goals into our budget, what it is that we want to do. And what else do we do? We pay ourselves first. So we always put money into our savings, into our investment account, just to make sure that we're taking care of us first and we have that cushion if we need it. And all of that is built into our ghost budget. So it allows us to use different um, techniques and different methods at the same time while still budgeting and being successful with that. So I hope this helped you all to at least start thinking about where you want to go in the next few weeks. This is a great time for you to start thinking about how you're going to budget and what you're going to do um, using some of those techniques and some of those uh, types and those methods that I gave you. Um, it's always worth some, a deeper dive. So whatever you choose to do, just make sure that you um, are being consistent and that you are implementing. Consistency and implementation, those are going to be your lifesavers. And over time, I'm telling you, all it's going to take is three, four months, and you're going to see a drastic change in your lifestyle, in your money, how you're spending, as long as you get on a budget and stick to it. So it's uh, 919. You guys have a great week. I will see you later this week on Instagram. I'll be posting reels. I have some great content coming. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's Money Monday. Have a good night and I will see you later. Bye.